Hi everyone, in this episode we're going to discuss the API penetration test, uh, sensitive data exposure vulnerability. Uh, this is our continuous series uh, for API pen test and we'll see some demonstration of the finding uh, as always and I'll, I'll also show you how you can uh, do the pen test uh, for such uh, vulnerabilities when you're doing the API pen test. So just to start with, Let's see, uh, what is the uh, access data exposure and the sensitive data exposure, right? So this is part of both API top 10 from the OWASP as well as the OWASP top 10 for web attacks. So in the API, it's the third ranking where, where it says like excessive data exposure, which means uh, like, you know, you expose the data that's more than required, such as uh, via verbose error messages, uh, via some header information, like like the server version or so, stuff like that. So that's the excessive data exposure. Uh, in the web uh, top 10, or the OWASP top 10, we have uh, 2017. It's a sensitive data exposure, and it's like, you know, any exposure through the query string in the URL is when sensitive data is passed to the parameters in the URL. And this allows attackers to obtain sensitive data, such as username, password, tokens, uh, database credentials, details, etc. And then, <clears throat> And then simply, even if you use like HTTPS, this is this does not remediate the issue uh, because this uh, sensitive data can be seen like you know unencrypted. And where do you see like where do you where do you see this data data can be leaked if you pass something into uh, the get URL or the query string, right? So you can leak into the adapter header. So when the uh, API or web is making call to another request, the refer header you could see literally. Uh, this sensitive information. It couldn't be found in the web logs. Of course, like if you're using AWS CloudTrail or, or any logging mechanism, it's going to uh, log every request. So this will be request as part of the logs. Uh, shared systems, of course, if you're using shared systems, then it will be uh, stored in the cache, in the browser cache, and another person who are using the system can easily find this information. Then it's always in the browser history. So if you like, you know, in the Google Chrome, if you go to the Chrome history, you can see all the URLs uh, that uh, you have visited if you're not using the incognito mode. Uh, so that's the way one can find all the sensitive data. Uh, uh, then we talked about the browser cache. There's the local storage and the session storage. Uh, one can easily find that uh, through shoulder surfing. And last but not the least, man the middle attack. So if the traffic is unencrypted, one can have the Wireshark or some uh, uh, intercepting tool running and they can uh, intercept all this traffic. So this is like, you know, these are all the possible ways the data can be leaked. And this, this is why like this is uh, the third rank vulnerability on both the API as well as the OWASP top 10. So if you see the example, let's say this is the URL, uh, vulnerablehost.com and then user is equal to Bob, or the token is equal to one, two, three, four and expires this. Now, this is very, very crucial because you are not supposed to pass the token in the query string. One can use, one can replay this token, uh, right? And one can do like a impersonation sort of attack. So that is why this is considered to be a bad practice. So how do you test this vulnerability? Uh, one thing, when you are given the API documentation, you review the API documentation, you see what the request uh, and response uh, being passed, and uh, like, you know, especially query string. If there is anything sensitive being passed, you call it out. Then you have fuzzing. Uh, when you are doing some fuzzing attacks, uh, when you are uh, using uh, burp, for example, a repeater, you are injecting some payloads and stuff like that, you can try to replay this uh, token and see if you are getting any success. So all sort of fudging techniques will uh, give you results whether the API is vulnerable or not. And last but not the least is the automated scan. Uh, and not just the burp, but like any any scanner uh, would flag if you are passing any sensitive information in the query string. Uh, so that's something the way you can do. So what are we gonna do now? Uh, we're gonna head on to the demo. Uh, we'll, I'll, I'll show you how you can uh, do this via Postman. Then we'll also set up the burp proxy and see the issue, how how do we find such issues in the burp. And then uh, we'll also try to use the burp scanner if it works. Uh, I know we have limited time in this video, so I'll, I'll kick it off the scan and then we'll see if it picks something up real quick, right? Okay, let me head on to the Postman then. So 
as you can see, uh, this is the API Pandas demo uh, APIs which I've created, and, and as you can see, these are the uh, requests from the previous video. So this is one of the requests we saw where we were passing the token information, which was vulnerable to SQL injection, I guess, and we, we saw the demo of how you can exploit it. So similarly, uh, like, you know, yeah, same way, what we can see uh, without even sending the request is the token is being passed on the query string. Uh, and this is bad because if I'm making the request uh, using uh, the browser, then I can easily have this in the, like, you know, browser history, right? So that's, that's, how, uh, that's how bad it is. Uh, the other request that it also supports is the login page. So here it's a users.php. It takes a JSON format. It, you can pass the username and password. And it's, so it should give you, uh, of course, the username, email ID registered with that uh, account and then the token information, which you can use and pass in this uh, request, which is the same uh, token anyway, uh, which gives you the detail of the account. I just build this, uh, like, you know, for this simple demonstration. So the real-world APIs might not be this simple, but, of course, if you are looking, going through the uh, documentation, you can easily find it. Now, let, let's configure this with the burp proxy and, and see how you can uh, use the burp to find such issues. So, all right, so we have this burp running. I, am, I have the intercept on. Let's send the request. Right, so first thing you want to do is uh, you want to do the active scan. Of course, this is a simple issue, so we are not much concerned about like how do we find the issue because we can literally see this token is being passed in the uh, query string, which is which is not a best practice. So we're gonna highlight as a high finding in our report. But then uh, you can also uh, do some fuzzing attacks like we did last time for the SQL injection, and hopefully our uh, scan will be done uh, soon, but even before then, as you can see, uh, it has flagged this uh, finding that session token in URL. Now, generally, this serves as a medium finding and confidence is firm. And the reason burp is not certain, so burp has three uh, ways uh, to catch the co uh, like you know confidence in the finding, whether it's tentative, firm, or certain. Firm means uh, it's it's Burp has some confidence, but not like 100%, and that's where you can say like, yeah, whether it's a certain or not. But it requires manual uh, review because Burp doesn't know if this token is really authentication token or just named as authentication token, or is it just like a random numbers that uh, named as a token, right? So based on that, Burp is not uh, sure, but it still highlights such issue. And if we see the uh, remediation, that should already make some transaction tokens such as cookies, hidden fields form that are submitted using post method. So we clearly do not allow anyone to submit the request, uh, submit such like you know, information uh, using the get request. So same thing, uh, you can do an active scan and it's gonna scan. Of course, we're not gonna wait uh, for the scan to finish or completed. But as you can see, uh, the last request we sent, this one, here we can uh, find out this user and password is being passed on to the URL, uh, which is uh, suspicious, and, and you should do that because Wireshark will easily be able to catch it and and one can uh, reuse our credentials. So that's why this is not a good practice to do it. Right, so this is, uh, this is pretty much it I wanted to cover uh, in this session. I know it's been, it's, it's, it's an easy session, but it's very important because I wanted to, uh, uh, make you understand that uh, reviewing the API documentation is very much required. Uh, you make sure you review this documentation thoroughly. If they don't have it, uh, ask for the client, like, you know, provide Swagger file, open API specification, Postman collection, whatever you can get. And based on that, you can you can find such issues very easily. Because oftentimes what I've seen is developer tend to understand, like, these are not, these are just API requests and, and no one is going to uh, make it, like, you know, uh, Make a request through the web UI if it's a standalone APIs, but that's that's not true. Like even though it's not a web request, it still has to be secure at the same level of how we how we secure the web web request or the web applications, right? So uh, thank you for your time. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can 
Also follow us on Facebook, uh, Cybersecurity TV, and this is where we post like regular updates, some interesting articles, any interesting news that I, I find, I usually post there. I've also put the links in the description, and I'll see you all next Monday with another interesting topic. Until then, happy hacking.